So in this video, I'm going to talk about nucleophilicity trends. So essentially, I'm going to talk about how you measure how you can determine if a nucleophile is strong or weak relative to one another. And so first, let's get essentially a foundation. So a strong nucleophile, a strong nucleophile, is more effective than a weak one obviously in attacking a carbon atom and so there's essentially four things we're going to talk about we're going to talk about electronegativity. We're going to talk about polarizability, resonance, and size, which we also like to call bulk. And so I want to explain that, obviously, in more depth. Those are the four things that you can consider when determining how strong a nucleophile is. And so first, we'll start with electronegativity. And so the lower the electronegativity, the better. So what I mean by that is um, something that is very, not as electronegative would be more willing to share electrons in a new bond. So essentially something that is less electronegative is more willing to share electrons. So more willing to share electrons slash make a new bond. And so let's give an example of that. Um, so as you know, fluorine F is more electronegative than oxygen. So Let's say we have something like this. Um, actually, so let's say we have OH minus versus F minus. So since the fluorine is more electronegative, it's pulling electrons to itself and very unlikely to share. Essentially think of it as just greedy with its electrons. It doesn't want to share it. Um, oxygen, on the other hand, is a little more generous. It can share some electrons. And so as a result, the oxygen is going to be more likely to form a bond and attack a carbon of an electrophilic carbon or an electrophile. And so the OH in this instance would be a better nucleophile. So better nucleophile and we represent nucleophile with an NU. And so another example would be, let's say we have HS versus HS minus versus CL minus. Since, C, since chlorine is more electronegative, is less willing to share electrons slash make a bond, so therefore the other one, HS, the sulfur, is more willing to make a bond with a carbon. So this one would be a better nucleophile. And if you forgot the electronegativity trends, it essentially, if the periodic table is like this, 
electronegativity increases that way. So the top right corner where the fluorine is, is the most electronegative. And so next we're going to talk about polarizability. So what I mean by that is essentially how big a atom is. So first let me just define this. So more polarizable Actually, let me just write all of this out. So the more polarizable something is, the better nucleophile it will be. And so polarizability just represents the size of a molecule. So let's say you have, as you can remember, um, as you go down the periodic table, size increases for atoms. So bromine, a Br minus, is a better nucleophile than chlorine minus and chlorine is a better nucleophile than fluorine minus but one thing polarizability um, the more polarizable something is the better it is for nucleophilicity but it decreases decreases basicity And here, it's essentially because bromine is a bigger atom, and so the electrons are further away, and they're more likely to participate in a bond. While something that's tighter to the nucleus, closer to the nucleus, is less likely to participate in a bond. And so essentially what, because the nucleus is positive, it attracts electrons so that more cl the closer the electrons are to the nucleus the less likely they're gonna be pulled away if you have something really far from the nucleus uh, I mean if you have electrons really far from the nucleus the other atoms will have a much easier time of using those electrons and pulling them away and so next, we're going to talk about another thing that affects nucleophilicity, which is resonance. And so for resonance, it's pretty simple. The less resonance you have, the more, the stronger a nucleophile will be. And that's because if something has a lot of resonance, that'll mean that the molecule is stable. So if the molecule is stable, it's less likely to react with something. And so if you don't have resonance, the molecule is not stable. And so as a result, it will be more likely to react with something. So it has a lower activation energy. And so as a result, you get something like this. Let's say you have something like this versus something that looks like this and so the one on the right has resonance and so more stable and as a result this one is less stable and according to our rule this one is the better nucleophile because it's more likely to react Finally, we're going to talk about size. And we just call that bulk. And this isn't the same as polarizability, remember, because polarizability depends on the atom. So I'm going to clarify the size, what I mean by size, in a second. So to be a nucleophile and to react with a carbon, the molecule has to get close to the carbon, obviously, like it has to come into contact with the carbon. So if you have a big group on the nucleophile, it will slow down the reaction. So bulky groups on the nucleophile hinder the approach 
So it makes it more difficult for the nucleophile to get um, to get to the carbon. So it hinders the approach and it slows down the reactions. And slows down the reaction. And so let's do an example. Let's say you have an OH minus and a CH3 minus. So I'm just going to draw this out. CH3 O and then a minus charge there. So as you can see there's a whole lot of crap on this side where uh, bonded to the nucleophilus nuclea bonded to the oxygen um, which is the nucleophile and so this molecule on the right is gonna have a lot harder of a time to approach and get into contact with a carbon than this molecule and so as a result this one is the better nucleophile and so that pretty much sums it up for nucleophilicity trends um, there's four things you have to consider polarizability electronegativity resonance and the size of the nucleophile and so you're probably gonna have a lot of um, questions where it's gonna have you rank the nucleophilicity like which one is a better nucleophile and so this will help with those types of questions um, I hope this video helped you if it did please give it a like and share it with your friends